I so I watched your video. I, I have to tell you, I'm I'm really happy to talk to you because I trade is hard, Alan. And we've been saying that it is confusing when obviously there's been dissension in our party about other issues before. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, it is hard when someone I trust, like President Obama or whether it's Howard Dean, I, I get some of their points or even Nancy Pelosi says, you know, and John Yarmouth, our friend said, there's some good stuff in it. We're concerned about, you know, enforceability. And then I totally get what you and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, a lot of other people that I really, really respect are saying. Tell us your take, because I, for a lay person, a lot of people don't even know like what this is, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. You know, I know that Nancy Pelosi said it's an improvement over NAFTA. You just think we sh we don't we shouldn't do it at all, correct? Uh, we should do something better instead of making the situation worse. But let me ask you: Did did you play any of it on the show? The video? I, I didn't play it on the show, but I watched it, and we've talked about and it. And we're, I mean, now look what's going to happen: the next fourteen people who dial into you are going to say, "Play the video, play the video, right. play the video, play the video." But it's a video. We're on the radio. <laughs> I know. You know I what's know. better is it's having Alan Grayson on himself to explain voice. it. <laughs> it's my voice. No, it's All right, okay. Here's here's the abbreviated version of it. Uh, the, the problem we have is, is not that we don't have enough free trade, it's that we do it wrong. Okay. What I mean by that is that we have these towering trade deficits that go on year after year. And the reason for that is very simple. What is the trade deficit? The trade deficit is the difference between what we buy from other countries and what, and what we, we sell to them. Okay. Uh, and it should be even. It should be equal. But in fact, for 20 years now, we buy their goods and services, and they don't buy an equal amount of our goods and services. And that is the trade deficit. And since You are doing so good years, so far. This is like TPP for dummies, which I totally yeah. need. <laughs> yeah. This is totally what I need. You know you're going to end up finding the video anyway, but I'll, I'll continue. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so, so, so here we are at this point. After 20 years of this, of this trade lunacy, we are at a point now where our trade deficit is over a billion dollars a day. It's been that way for the past 14 years, 14 years, a billion dollars a day. We now owe foreigners $11 trillion. That's $35,000 for every man, woman, and child in this country. Why aren't we talking about that? The TPP, right. the Fast Track, the Trans-Atlantic Partnership, these things will make it worse, not better. And, and well, no, when Republicans are for something, I know there must be something wrong. <laughs> but, exactly. But it obviously exactly. Has, has split. The, the Republicans gave the president a standing ovation while the Democrats sat silently when the president gave his two lines on this in his, his, his speech, uh, his State of the Union speech. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. What is the effect of that? We are employing tens of millions of foreigners as we buy their goods and services. They don't let their people buy our goods and services. They manipulate the currency. Mm -hmm. They have capital controls. They don't let their people do that. What they do instead is they take those rectangular green pieces of paper with pictures of dead presidents on them. They take them and they buy our assets. Yeah. Wow. Our assets okay. to the tune of $11 trillion. Right. So what's the result of that? They don't create any jobs in the United States. Our jobs go overseas. We've lost 5 million jobs. So this is the, because the, I know, started. this is currency and, manipulation, and right? For people that... What's that? This is currency manipulation you're talking about, right? When people currency hear these manipulation, capital okay. controls, basically, uh, they they are stacking the deck so that, that that they end up buying our assets instead of our goods and services, and so the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Who benefits when they buy our, our services? The one percent. We end up with the fourth most unequal distribution of wealth in the entire world, and at the same time, we lose the jobs. We lose the jobs, not just the 5 million manufacturing jobs, but the 15 million other jobs that depended upon those 5 million manufacturing jobs. Uh, so we end up with an economy that's bleeding a billion dollars a day. Why do we have a federal deficit? Because we have a trade deficit. Why do we have quantitative easing? Because we have a trade deficit. Why do we have the fourth most unequal distribution of wealth in the world? Because we have a trade deficit. And both Fast Track and the TPP would make that worse. And, and where does it end up? We end up with, with, with a country where we own nothing. We're, we're a country of cheap labor where we're competing head to, head to head against Vietnamese workers who make 30 cents an hour. And, and, and on top of that, we're debt slaves. We, we already reached the point right. where we we're owe $11 trillion. The end game is that we'll owe all of it. All of it. Um, and, the, and, and this is, we lose twice. We lose the jobs and, and we also lose our independence economically as we go deeper and deeper yeah. into debt. Congressman Grayson, in your video, which I loved and I've just posted up on my Facebook page magically as we were speaking, <laughs> uh, it is up on the Stephanie Miller Show Facebook page. It is. Um, you mentioned, I, I think towards the end, about the Buffett plan. Is this something that you support in, in place of TPP or, or what, what is that in this uh, regard? 
Yeah, it's it's very simple. In, what what is happening is other countries are screwing us by uh, by having selling us their goods and services and buying our assets in return. So what the Buffett plan does is it it counters that. It's the counter move to that. What we do is we decide what are we going to charge for access to our market, and we we sell off certificates that allow access to the U.S. market to the highest bidder. So it's a free market type plan. It doesn't create, uh, you know, discriminatory tariffs or anything like that. It says if you want access to a market, here's what you have to pay, and it lets the market decide what that amount is. We decide, let's say, that we will have next year, we're, we're, we're willing to take $2.5 trillion of imports, and we just sell off certificates to allow $2.5 trillion of imports. What do we do with the money we get from those certificates? We can increase Social Security, we can increase Medicare, we can pay for infrastructure, we can cut taxes, we can do all sorts of productive, useful things with that. In fact, why do we tax Americans when, in fact, we could be raising money from, from charging for access to our market? And that's the Buffett plan. What it would do is, is that- reduces the trade deficit or eliminates the trade deficit based upon our collective decisions about whether we're going to stop being exploited by foreign governments. But what I guess what I'm asking, is that in place of TPP? Because I think, yeah. you know, the argument you hear on the other side is, look, there, this is going to happen with or without us. We're not going to ever stop trading. I mean, is there anything that could be changed that would would, would uh, cause you to support TPP or not? No, I mean, look, look, what it does is it greases the skids toward the, the future that I just described, where we own nothing and we, we have nothing to offer but our cheap labor. That, and, and we're competing head-to-head against countries where there's no Social Security, no Medicare, no environment protection, no safety protection, not even rules against child labor and slave labor. And, and our workers are competing against that. And, and all I'm doing is saying that we should go back to the way things were before NAFTA when we had a healthy economy, when we had a manufacturing base, and we can get there. Yeah. Uh, not if we're going to grease the skids on this fast track to hell. We're, we're, uh, so you don't, you wouldn't support, our, you wouldn't, our own sovereignty. Mm-hmm. you wouldn't vote for TPP even if changes were made that some Democrats are, are asking for. I would vote for TPP if TPP would, in fact, increase our manufacturing base and 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 increase our, our trade and, and improve our trade balance. When in fact it's the opposite, and they know it's the opposite. And they're faking. I asked the trade representative, "Do you have any evidence? Have you developed any evidence?" Uh, that would show that this would improve our trade balance, not make it even worse, already a billion dollars in the hole each day. And he said no. And the reason why is because we, we all know it's the opposite. As soon as we uh, signed the free trade agreement with Korea just a couple of years ago, our trade balance with Korea crashed. Uh, it went it went into the toilet. So when people and, say it's an improvement over NAFTA, that's not saying much is what your your point is. Oh, my God. NAFTA did something yeah. that economists thought was impossible and managed to impoverish both American workers and Mexican workers at the same time because the benefits went only to multinational corporations. Hmm.